It's my pleasure to present uh, the data in the name of Paolo Ghia, our investigators and asserter of uh, the third phase randomized study where we challenged aclabrutinib, a BGK inhibitor, against uh, the investigator's choice in relapsing refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Aclabrutinib is uh, a covalent, more selective BGK inhibitor. It is registered in, uh, by FDA in relapsing refractory mantle cell lymphoma. And it um, has a more, mm, uh, it has a less off-target kinase inhibition compared to ibrutinib. At the time this study was planned, the standard of care in relapsing refractory CLL were bendamastin rituximab and idelalizib rituximab. Both had a more or less similar progression free survival ranging from 14 to 19 months. We randomized 310 patients stratified according to 17P deletion, ECOG status, and number of previous therapy lines. Randomization was one to one against acalabrutinib and uh, investigator's choice. Acalabrutinib was given at 100 milligrams by daily, uh, idelalizib plus rituximab and bendamastin rituximab in a standard doses. Here we present the data from interim analysis, which happened after we found uh, 79 progression-free survival events. The primary endpoint was PFS assessed by um, a independent review committee. The secondary endpoints were response rates, duration of response, and other survival times. The study allowed for the crossover, therefore patients uh, relapsing after idella and bendamastin arms could have received uh, acalabrutinib. The average age was uh, 68 and 67 in the two cohorts. Bulky disease was you know, in about 50% of the cases uh, stage 3, 4 disease in 40% of the cases. Although you might uh, think that uh, the medium number of prior therapists uh, differed, as it was one in acalabrutinib and two in investigator's choice, the more detailed analysis shown below demonstrates that in fact 80% uh, of the cases in both arms were after failing the first and the second therapy line. Uh, we had about 70% of pure and analog failures, 90% uh, of alkylator failures, and so on, so on. The cytogenetic status was also evenly distributed. This is the most important uh, slide uh, summarizing the primary target. And uh, after the medium observation of 16 months, we could clearly demonstrate the superiority of acalabrutinib versus investigator's choice. At one year, we had 88% uh, of faculobrutinib treated patients progression free and just 68% of uh, idella rituximab and bendamastin rituximab. Uh, to take it further, uh, only a few patients uh, were treated with bendamastin rituximab. So in fact, this is the first uh, randomized comparison, head to head comparison of BTK inhibitor and IP3K inhibitor demonstrating the clear superiority of BTK inhibitor in this clinical setting. It holds regardless the risk factors, and here you see uh, the survival curves of those patients who had cytogenetic uh, risk factors like 17P deletion, 11Q deletion, unmutated status, uh, or TP53 mutation. Forest plots are forest plots, but uh, what you see here is all pre-specified analysis, and therefore we could not demonstrate any difference, whatever the age, sex, ECOP, race stage, bulky disease, uh, number of prior therapies, or the above mentioned cytogenetic risk factors. Uh, that's a busy slide, but uh, what is important here is that although the response rates were not that very much different, uh, the duration of responses were, and it was clearly demonstrated with statistical significance. There were no overall survival differences, but that was uh, um, self-explanatory as for the fact that half of the patients progressing after idella rituximab arm uh, eventually got acalabrutinib. Now, if you look at uh, uh, 
exposure to therapy, uh, relative dose intensity, uh, in the acalabrutinib cohort we had 99.5 uh, dose intensity range, uh, where, which was superior to Idella, where it was 90. Uh, perhaps more important, if we look at the discontinuation to therapy, uh, half of patients receiving idololisib were discontinued prematurely due to side effects. Uh, only 10%, so five times less uh, patients on, on acalabrutinib were discontinued. Looking at adverse events, of all adverse events, if uh, taken from one to five, uh, the frequency was compatible between therapy arms. If we look at the serious adverse events, so grade three or four adverse events, we had uh, twice as many in Idella rituximab arm than in acalabrutinib arm. So we had 30% uh, of serious events in acalabrutinib and nearly 60 in Idella rituximab. Looking for safety, well, headache was the only adverse event which was more common in acalabrutinib arm. So if you have a patient uh, in Italy, you ask them to drink coffee. If you have the patient in UK, according to Simon Ruler, you ask them to drink Red Bull. But this is, <laughs> that's the only uh, side effect which was prominent and more frequent in acalabrutinib arm. The rest, specifically neutropenia, diarrhea, and infections, were much more frequent in, in idololisib. Talking about grade three or four adverse events, again, neutropenia, much more twice as frequent in idle illicit arm, and so were the infections. The adverse events of specific interest, yes, we, do, we did observe slightly more atrial fibrillations, but only 1% was grade three or greater. Uh, hypertension was marginal and bleeding, although some bleeding events were seen in 26% of uh, acalabrutinib treated patients only 2% were grade three or greater. We observed no intracranial bleeding and nothing really da clinically dangerous. Again, infections prominent in the calabrutinib arm uh, and uh, with uh, compatible frequency between acalabrutinib and bendamustin rituximab. Sorry, prominent nidella arm. Uh, what's worrying and uh, we are observing is, is secondary primary malignancies and as you see, uh, we uh, demonstrated 6% in acalabrutinib versus 3% in idolisib arm. But it might be due to the shorter amount of drugs exposure in idolisib cohort. So to conclude, in a sense study, and it's boring because this one of the uh, subsequent uh, presentation of this meeting once we are claiming that BTK inhibitors are superior. So acalabrutinib was superior to the uh, competitors, namely idolilisib rituximab and or uh, bendamustin rituximab in relapsing refractory CLL setting. PFS was improved and this was proven by the independent review committee. Responses to acalabrutinib were durable, side effects were few. Acalabrutinib monotherapy has a more, uh, is better tolerated and has a better safety profile than idolilisib rituximab. Uh, just to mention that uh, the phase three uh, Elevate TN study, which is investigating acalabrutinib in the first line CLL, there was a press release uh, and the study is positive. Presumably the results will be uh, demonstrated on the next ASH meeting. Therefore, we conclude that acalabrutinib, a novel BTK, selective BTK inhibitor, is an interesting therapy option in CLL patients, both in the first line and relapse. Thank you.